press the bell icon on the YouTube app and never miss another update. Hello students. In the previous class, we have discussed about uh, the properties of electromagnetic waves. I mean properties of uh, different uh, types of electromagnetic waves starting from uh, gamma radiation to right, uh, radio waves. Most of the properties are common to electromagnetic waves, but uh, when we compare this uh, gamma rays or uh, X-rays, ultraviolet rays, they have some uh, various applications and various problems, right? The important thing is, uh, right, uh, how different kinds of electromagnetic waves are produced, who discovered, right, uh, how they can be detected, major properties and applications, right, as far as, uh, right, electro ultraviolet rays, infrared radiations and microwaves are very important. And now we will take uh, another important concept that is visible spectrum or simply spectrum. Now so far we have discussed electromagnetic spectrum that includes all the wavelength range from gamma radiation to right up radio waves but here we are particularly discussing about visible spectrum that is the spectrum right or wavelengths which we can able to see sense through our sense organ through eye right that is visible spectrum and uh, it is here onwards uh, whenever I say that it is spectrum and of course it is a uh, visible spectrum. Now what is a spectrum? Right, we know that a white light consists of uh, seven colors. Vibgaya, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange and red. So, violet has nearly the wavelength of 4000 angstrom rate and red has nearly the wavelength of 7500 angstrom rate and uh, different colors have different wavelengths, right. So, here the color of light depends upon wavelength or corresponding the frequency of uh, light. Generally, pure white light consists of uh, seven colors. Right. Now, an ordered sequence of colors or wavelengths or frequencies right, is called as a, a spectrum. Right. How to obtain a spectrum? Right. When a white light or composite light emitted from a source right, is made to pass through a dispersing medium such as a prism. Right. Now the dispersion takes place, the light splits up into its constituent colors or wavelength, right. When we place a screen in the path of uh, the emergent light, we will see a band of colors, right, or wavelengths on that screen. That band of ordered colors or wavelengths obtained on uh, the screen is called as a uh, spectrum right there may be impure spectrum or pure spectrum that is immaterial here right now these colors right so visible spectrum consists of all possible wavelengths from 4000 angstrom unit to right 7500 angstrom unit right now basically whenever we heat a substance, right? When a heat a substance, whether it may be a solid, liquid, or gas, heated to a very high temperature, they begin to emit radiation. 
some portion may be in infrared radiation and some portion may be in a visible region also that is visible light right when light emitted from a substance is passed through a prism we will obtain a spectrum so each element or substance gives its own characteristic uh, spectrum right now no two element or no two different substance can give right the same pattern of a uh, right uh, spectrum right it is just like a fingerprint right so every element every substance has uh, its own pattern of a uh, spectrum right it is the characteristic of uh, the element or substance right now the study of this spectrum right help us to find atomic structure or molecular structure of uh, the substance right for example in chemistry right you are having laboratory you are having a flame test when you take the given sample in spatula and put it on a bunsen burner suppose if you get golden yellow flame then the inference is that uh, it may be a sodium right so sodium gives right a golden yellow flame that golden yellow color is the characteristics of water that sodium alone similarly different substances give different colors or different set of colors or different set of wavelengths right now the spectrum is called as the language of atoms and molecules spectrum is called as language of atoms or molecules because the spectra of a substance reveals complete information about atomic structure or molecular structure of uh, the substance in that way the study of uh, visible spectrum is very important and of course the other spectrum also electromagnetic spectrum is very important uh, in the study of uh, atomic structure and uh, molecular structure even the bohr's atom model is uh, mainly based on uh, the spectrum emitted by hydrogen gas right now this uh, visible spectrum right are classified into two types visible spectrum are classified into two types number 1 emission spectrum spectrum is singular spectra is plural form now absorption spectrum absorption spectrum depending upon uh, the specimen or substance we are using to study the spectrum right now if the specimen what we are using to study the spectrum is an emitter or a luminous body like uh, an electric lamp right uh, a candled flame or a substance heated to very high temperature right the resulting uh, spectrum is called as emission spectrum it is obtained due to the radiations emitted by an emitter right now absorption spectrum right sometimes right um, we may use absorber as a sample right um, now that uh, absorber it absorbs certain radiation right uh, in case if the specimen under observation is an absorber of radiation then the resulting spectrum is called as absorption spectrum right so therefore there are two types of spectrum emission spectrum and absorption spectrum now we will take one by one that is emission spectrum emission spectrum right now a spectrum given out by a luminous body 
which is emitting radiation is called as a right uh, emission spectrum right emission spectrum is given out by luminous bodies or the bodies which are emitting radiation or light right. now depending upon the appearance now depending upon the appearance right this this emission spectrum is classified into three types that is number one continuous emission spectrum number two line emission spectrum and number three right band absorption spectrum generally speaking solids liquids and vapor under high pressure give continuous emission spectrum gases or vapors in atomic state they give line emission spectrum right gas or vapor and of course at low pressure right in molecular state give band emission spectrum generally when we take vapor a vapor under high pressure gives continuous emission spectrum a vapor under low pressure gives either line emission spectrum or band emission spectrum right now we will take uh, this one by one now continuous emission spectrum continuous emission spectrum this continuous emission spectrum is given out by incandescent solids that is solids at a high temperature right liquids at a high temperature or this vapor under high pressure right now this continuous emission spectrum right uh, appears as a continuous band of colors including all possible wavelengths from violet to red without any breaking right that means uh, it will be like that it will be like that so this is here it be right so it contains all possible colors from violet to red and of course depending upon uh, the source of light so such a spectrum is called as continuous because the spectrum wavelength order appears to be continuous it is emission spectrum and uh, when we plot a graph of energies associated with the wavelengths or colors against the wavelength right like this by taking wavelength along x axis and uh, energy along uh, y axis right now we look find curves like this this is say for temperature t1 this is for temperature t2 and this is for temperature t3 here we will take t3 greater than t2 
greater than A1. We are increasing the temperature of the source. We will get uh, the curves like this. Now, for a given temperature, there is a particular peak here. This is the lambda one. Here it is lambda two. Here it is lambda three. Right? Same substance, right? When we go on changing the temperature, right? The peak value changes. That is the this peak, right? Indicates the maximum energy, right? So at a given temperature, the energy associated with the uh, a wavelength, particular wavelength, is maximum, and it decreases on either side. Say it at T1. Here, this is the wavelength corresponding to maximum energy, and the energy decreases on either side. This wavelength is called right uh, the wavelength corresponding to maximum. <coughs> It's so a maximum energy, right? Wavelength corresponding to maximum energy. As we go on increasing the temperature, the wavelength corresponding to the maximum energy shifts towards shorter wavelength region, right? That means a lambda three is less than lambda two is less than lambda one, right? This is in accordance with the Wain's law. Right, we have discussed earlier in first PUC in the chapter radiation. Right, we have discussed Wain's law, Kirchhoff's law, Stephen's law, Planck's law, etc. Right, where it comes. Right, now this is in accordance with Wain's law. Right, according to Wain's law, the wavelength corresponding to the maximum right wavelength of a radiating body. Is inversely proportional to absolute temperature of the body. That is, uh, lambda m is proportional to one by t. Lambda m into t is equal to a constant b. That constant is called as Wain's constant, and its value is equal to 2.9 into 10 power minus 3 meter Kelvin. Right. So this one. So Wain's law can explain this uh, right uh, maximum right uh, wavelength <coughs> corresponding to the maximum energy, and with the help of Wain's law, right, we can explain the continuous emission spectrum. So this Wain's law or Wain's displacement law, with the help of this. We can able to measure the surface temperature of the sun. So there is no uniform distribution of energy among the available wavelengths of radiation emitted by a body. Right? This non-uniform distribution of right energy or intensity could not be explained by right <coughs> electromagnetic theory. Therefore, Max Planck, in order to explain the distribution of energy in black body radiation, of course, uh, he proposed the Planck's quantum theory, and that leads to the dual nature of uh, light. Right. So now, what are the sources of uh, this continuous emission spectrum? Right. The sources are. right so a glowing filament a glowing filament right now a candle flame candle flame so arc lamp and spark lamp emitting white light and even gas flame emitting white light right uh, they are all the sources of uh, 
the continuous emission spectrum next line emission spectrum line emission spectrum now a line emission spectrum is given out by gases or vapors under low pressure in atomic state right for example when we take right carbon it is in atomic state right but co carbon monoxide is in molecular state right similarly o2 is in molecular state but helium neon right hydrogen etc are in atomic state right now so line emission spectrum is uh, given out by gases and vapors in a uh, atomic uh, right uh, state now this line emission spectrum it uh, consists of right uh, a complete dark background there is a complete dark background with one or more lines at uh, various parts of uh, the colors that is uh, in the region from uh, violet to red right depending upon uh, the sample right it may have one line two line or several lines such a spectrum is called as a line emission spectrum for example we take sodium vapor sodium vapor lamp right uh, earlier they were generally used as a uh, street lamps right sodium vapor lamps when we observe that one right it gives only two lines right those lines are called d1 and d2 lines one having the wavelength lambda one is equal to 5890 angstrom right and another one having the wavelength 5896 right angstrom unit they are called sodium d1 d2 lines right except this lines right these two lines are sodium vapor will not give any other line so this d1 d2 these two wavelengths are the characteristic of uh, the sodium right the element right and uh, when we take the case of uh, hydrogen gas in atomic state hydrogen gas in atomic state that means it is uh, heated to a very high temperature it began to emit radiation right it gives four lines right so one in red region one in blue region and two in violet region this is in visible region right now this line emission spectra right major lines right are four lines right this is called h alpha h beta h gamma and h delta right and uh, this spectral series of hydrogen atom is called as bomber series right and of course hydrogen atom can also give right spectral lines in uv region infrared region and even in a microwave region but uh, our discussion is confined to only visible region of spectrum and uh, when a mercury vapor lamp is heated when <coughs> mercury vapor gives again 
a number of colored lines against dark background and these lines are due to the excited state of atoms that is these lines are the radiations of certain wavelength right due to the transition of electron from higher energy orbit to lower energy orbit of an atom right therefore line emission spectrum is also called as atomic spectrum line emission spectrum is also called as atomic spectrum and of course we know that right sodium vapor hydrogen gas right and uh, this uh, um, mercury vapor right they all give line emission spectrum so the line emission spectrum right uh, gives information about uh, the atomic structure and this uh, hydrogen spectrum right uh, could be explained by bohr's atom model right uh, now this uh, hydrogen spectrum gave a strong support to bohr's atom model now it is band emission spectrum so band emission spectrum is given out by chemical compounds or gases such as uh, carbon dioxide oxygen right uh, nitrogen etc right uh, this uh, spectrum consists of uh, a number of bright colored bands right separated by dark spaces right suppose like this right now here bright colored bands are there not the lines but they are separated by dark spaces here now the intensity of band is maximum at one end called band head and it decreases towards the other end called as right band tail right and uh, this spectrum is uh, given out <coughs> due to molecular state of gases or vapors the study of band spectrum gives information about uh, the molecular structure of the gas or vapor therefore band emission spectrum is also called as molecular spectrum right band emission spectrum is also called as molecular spectrum now absorption spectrum right now suppose we see we are having a prism here there is a source of light emitting radiation when radiation is passed through that prism we will obtain a spectrum and that spectrum is emission spectrum depending upon the source suppose we are here we are having an incandescent solid or glowing filament lamp we will get continuous emission spectrum here suppose here we are having right uh, a mercury vapor lamp we will get line emission spectrum suppose here we are having a vapor or gas in molecular state we will obtain band emission spectrum right that is emission spectrum that uh, three types that depends upon the source right appearance now suppose here we have a source that emits 
white line consisting of all the wavelengths from violet to red now this radiation is passed through right the absorbing medium which is absorbing medium suppose if t1 is the temperature of the source t2 is the temperature of the absorber and t2 is less than right t1 that is the temperature of absorber is a uh, right less than the temperature of the source right now the uh, radiation when passed through the prism we will obtain a spectrum on the screen and that spectrum is called as absorption spectrum right here we will see right a band of colors but right certain wavelengths are missing here right such a spectrum is called as a absorption spectrum so when right a white light is made to pass through an absorbing medium and then passed through a prism we will obtain a absorption spectrum right now the depending upon again the appearance or the nature of the absorbing medium right now absorption spectrum again classified into right continuous absorption spectrum continuous absorption spectrum line absorption spectrum and this band absorption spectrum right and that depends upon uh, the nature of uh, the absorbing medium right suppose if now we will take that term. continuous absorption spectrum continuous absorption spectrum so here when we use right a solid or a liquid when we use a solid or a liquid right then we will get a continuous band of colors with certain portions cut off certain portions cut off right suppose if i remove this absorbing medium then this will be a continuous emission spectrum right uh, including all possible wavelengths without any right uh, dark space but here some dark space are there that means to say right a certain wavelengths are missing in the spectrum right so where do the wavelength or radiation go right those of wavelengths are absorbed by this absorbing medium right suppose if it is emitting lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda 3 lambda 4 lambda 5 right if it absorbs lambda 2 and lambda 4 then the resulting wavelength will have lambda 1 lambda 3 and lambda 5 those two wavelengths are that are absorbed right <coughs> the those two missing wavelengths are absorbed by absorbing medium now line absorption spectrum line absorption spectrum now the line absorption spectrum is obtained right when the absorbing medium is a gas or vapor in atomic state now if uh, there is a gas in atomic state as an absorbing medium then 
the resulting spectrum right right is a, a completely bright colored background right with the one or more lines dark lines at the different portions of the spectrum right so a line absorption spectrum consists of a continuous bright colored band with the one or more dark lines again these dark lines right are the missing wavelengths which are absorbed by the absorbing medium right and uh, suppose right if we remove that one then those dark lines appear as bright colored lines with the right dark background for example if we use sodium vapor as an absorber right then we will see two dark lines we we'll see two dark lines those line corresponding to the wavelengths of d1 and d2 lines right suppose if the source is removed then the colored background becomes dark background and uh, the dark line becomes two bright yellow lines suppose if uh, we introduce again the source then the spectrum becomes bright continuously colored background but dark lines such a spectrum is called as line absorption spectrum right so line absorption spectrum can be explained on the basis of kirchhoff's law of radiation it can be explained on the basis of kirchhoff's law of radiation right that means a good absorber is a good emitter that means any substance right uh, that absorbs right uh, only those wavelengths at low temperature right uh, those which can emit at a uh, high temperature right only because of the reason when we use only sodium vapor we will see two bright yellow lines with dark background suppose if we use the source and uh, sodium as an observer at the same spot we will see two dark lines with bright colored background right so the study of uh, line absorption spectrum help us uh, to find the structure of uh, the atom or I mean atomic structure as well as uh, we can able to identify the gas or element right even the presence of helium right uh, in the sun is identified by line absorption spectrum even the solar spectrum the spectrum obtained by the sunlight is uh, a line absorption spectrum and those lines are called fraunhofer's lines now when the sunlight is passed through a prism we will obtain a spectrum and that spectrum consists of a continuous bright colored background with some dark lines those dark lines of solar spectrum are called fraunhofer lines so fraunhofer lines or the dark lines appeared in a solar spectrum there are large number of lines are there but the main lines are right denoted by a b c d e f g and h these are all the main lines right now why 
Fraunhofer lines appear in solar spectrum. It is because the interior part of the sun is called as photosphere. Its temperature is of the order of 10 raised to the power of 7 Kelvin. Right? It is surrounded by a mixture of gases called chromosphere. Right? Its temperature is of the order of 6000 Kelvin. That is our phase temperature of the sun. Right? Now, this chromosphere can be called as uh, the atmosphere of uh, the sun. Here, in the interior of uh, the sun, that is at the photosphere, thermonuclear fusion reaction takes place, right? Uh, giving enormous amount of energy, right? And uh, that uh, light produced inside the right the photosphere right has to pass through chromosphere before reaching earth before reaching the earth they have to pass through chromosphere right here while passing through the chromosphere certain number of wavelengths are right absorbed by the gases which are present in uh, the chromosphere right obviously when gases in chromosphere relatively at lower temperature absorb certain radiations which themselves can emit at high temperature those uh, wavelengths are obviously missing in the solar spectrum and those missing wavelengths right are absorbed by gases in the chromosphere and they appear as a uh, dark lines in uh, from half a solar spectrum, right? Now, during total solar eclipse that happens for a few moments, right? The moon covers, right, the photosphere completely. Moon completely covers photosphere during total solar eclipse. At that time, right? Earth will not receive the light from the chromosphere, I mean photosphere. It is receiving right, uh, light from the chromosphere. When it is receiving light only from the chromosphere, for that period of time, during total solar eclipse, now the solar spectrum appears as a line emission spectrum. Right? Those dark lines now appear as bright colored lines with dark right background and uh, such a spectrum is called as flash spectrum and uh, flash spectrum is right used to right confirm total solar eclipse right now similarly when we have an absorbing medium is uh, in molecular state we will obtain band absorption spectrum right a band absorption spectrum consists of a number of right dark bands right against the bright colored background so in line absorption spectrum dark lines will appear in band absorption spectrum dark bands will appear right and uh, that completes uh, your electromagnetic waves I mean starting from displacement current Maxwell ampere circuit law history of electromagnetic waves right properties of electromagnetic spectrum and finally the visible spectrum right the study of spectrum is very important because it gives uh, information about atomic structure and molecular structure of uh, substances or elements, right? Now, in the next class, uh, we will discuss uh, some competitive part, right, uh, of uh, this chapter and uh, regarding the synopsis, right? Uh, I have mentioned every point, 
right uh, by studying these things right that may be the expressions for speed of light it may be energy right magnetic energy density electrical energy density and even energy associated with electromagnetic wave the energy i mean intensity of electromagnetic wave radiation pressure right and uh, how to expression for displacement current etc right now we will take uh, that competitive part in the next uh, class and then we will conclude this chapter right okay thank you